Hey guys, welcome to my channel and I'm back again with another really interesting video and in this video guys, we are going to explore the best IDE for the year 2024 and that is Replit. So without taking any time further, let's get started. So guys, you can see on my screen, I have got Replit.com website open and now you might ask that why am I saying that Replit is actually the best IDE for 2024? So let me just go through with some of the features for this particular software. First of all guys, Replit is an online editor. So yes guys, you don't need to install anything like IntelliJ or Eclipse, anything on your local machine. You want to save that local machine memory and RAM, you can very well do so with the help of Replit because it allows you to edit your code online. Second thing guys, it gives you all the features that you can see in any of the IDEs. It has support for many, many programming languages, almost all programming languages you can think of. It has got debugging capabilities and not only that guys, it has got AI integration which helps you to generate your code while you are building your application. Now, and in addition to that, guys, Replit also gives you a way to test your code side by side by deploying it on a local server. And you can actually just generate that link and even share it with your friends who can test that code out while you are building the software. And if you are not impressed by all these capabilities, then let me give you one final banger. Replit is completely free. So yes, guys, if you want to build a basic software who doesn't need that much CPU, you or that much RAM, you can build it completely free with the help of this IDE. Obviously, guys, if you want to build a software that needs a lot more uh, memory, a lot more resources, then you might have to go uh, for a paid plan. But if you want to build a, a basic software, you can build it for free with the help of Replit uh, Editor. Okay. So I hope you guys are excited by all these features that I just gave you and if you are then you must be really looking forward for the demo for this editor. So without taking any time further, let's jump into the demo. So first of all guys, you can see on my screen and I am on replit.com page and you will land up on this page and all you have to do is just log in. You can see that I logged in with my uh, Google account. Now you click on create ripple here. When you click on play, create ripple, it gives you a selection of templates that basically is the type of programming language you want to build your software on. So you can select Python, HTML, Node.js, uh, C++, Java, Go, basically any language that you can think of, it is present in, this, uh, in these templates. For me, just to keep the matter simple, I'm going to choose Python. Then you can just give a simple title like, you know, demo. Now we have got other options as well like import from github where you can actually import a project you already created from github inside your editor and then you can always ask ai if you have no idea on how to start building a project just ask ai that i want to build this and it will actually suggest you the template that you should go for okay now just click on create ripple and you will see that it actually creates a public URL. So you can actually share that URL with anybody in the world. If you want to make your um, URL or basically make your project private, then you have to upgrade to a paid account. Okay. But we just want to, you know, we explore this out. So we'll uh, go forward with the uh, public one. Now, as soon as you create your project, you will land up on the project's uh, project explorer page basically i can say it is similar to any uh, ide you can see and what you can see here is that the files they are present inside this files tab and then there are certain tools that are present inside the tools tab because i selected a python template it already created a main.py for me which is empty at the moment but you can see that it also created certain project log files because if, if we need to install the Python dependencies, they will all get installed inside these uh, poetry and project uh, log files. Okay. So now that we have got the files with us, we have got certain tools as well. It is time to start building a software, right? So let me just uh, start building with a simple for loop. Now, here's one important thing, guys. You can actually do a generate code with AI in case of Ripple. So all I need to do is just click here and give a prompt. And as for this prompt, it's going to actually generate the code for me. 
and if you like that code you can just click on accept and there you go that code is now pasted into your main python file and if you want to run this code all you have to do is click on run and you will see that it starts printing everything on the console so there you go guys it was so easy in like a few clicks you actually were able to build a project write the code and even run it so this is the power of this ide now guys if you are already a experienced software developer you might say well no ide is ever complete without adding a debugger into it which is the most important thing a debugger is much needed for every software developer and we also have a debugger here right so we have got a debugger tool here right so you can just drag your debugger tool on this side and all you now need is a breakpoint right so if you just double click or click on the side of your code line it inserts a breakpoint here now if you want to actually start debugging you just run not from the top but from the debugger uh, panel and you will see that it starts to run and it will come every time on the breakpoint when it comes on the breakpoint you will see all the values of the variables so you can see that the value of i right now is 1 and if i go for the next part you can see that now you know it keeps on it keeps on going so now the i value is 2 right if if you stop the debugger obviously the debugger will be stopped and uh, it will just print the entire code on the console okay so that is how you can write your code, run your code and even debug your code. And you also saw that we did everything with the help of AI also. So you can even generate the code with the help of AI. Now that we know that how you can actually debug and you know do these uh, things, it is also important for us to find out if you are building a web-based project, how you can actually inspect or how you can work with web-based project. Because right now, we are only working with a software code that is printing the things on a console. So it's majorly back-end, right? But what if you have a combination of a back-end and front-end project? How can you actually investigate that or how can you actually build upon it? So what I'm going to do guys is I'm going to actually go to the files here and I'm going to actually add a new file. So I will add a new file and let me name this new file as my web.py. Okay, so this is a web based project that I want to build and to actually create this web based project again I'm going to use the help of AI and I will generate the code with the help of AI asking a prompt. For now, my prompt says create a streamlit project with a text box and a submit button. So guys, for those of you who don't know, streamlit is a Python framework which helps you to create web based project with a front end. And it also gives you a way to actually just manage that entire front end with the help of a simple Python script. Okay, so think of it something like Flask, but with a more basic front end features. Uh, or something like Gradio also if you have been working with the hugging face but it is basically just the way of a python to render the html content okay uh, html components so now i'm just going to accept this code guys and you can see that this is a simple streamlit code which basically creates a text input and it has a submit button and when you click on the submit button it just tells you that this is the text that you have entered inside the text input Okay, now you can see that I am getting a red line below Streamlit. Why am I getting this red line? Because Streamlit is an external package that I have not yet installed. So I need this package to be installed. So the one thing that I will always recommend uh, to guys who are using Python is that if you are having these uh, packages, always create a requirements.txt file. So something like uh, this. So requirements.txt file. And whatever package you want to actually install in it, just mention that in that requirements.txt. And then you can use this requirement.txt to actually install the packages. However, this is the traditional way of using the dependency resolution. If you are not well versed with it and you just want to go forward with your, you know, being, you can actually do another thing which is called as dependency injection with the help of these tools. So if you see inside the tools, there's something called as dependencies. If you double click on this, it will ask you that what dependencies you want to import in your project. 
Now here if I just write the name of my package which is streamlet it is going to start searching all the versions of that package. You can see that it searched and it says that I have got streamlet 1.37 version available. Okay. All you have to do is now click on install. When you click on install, it is going to actually create an entry in your project.2ml file. And this project.2ml file is the file which actually gets loaded when your project is loaded. So this is the file in case of this editor that is actually installing all the packages. So think of it in like in a way like if you are using a Node.js project, you have got a package JSON, right? So it automatically is inserting the package in your package.json file. So you will see that uh, it got the streamlet value here, right? However, again, I would say the same thing that this is very good if you are actually editing this software in Replit and you are only using it through here. Uh, if you want to actually move this software to somewhere else, then you might need the list of the dependencies that you actually installed. So it's always a good practice to have a requirements.txt file where you keep a track of all the dependencies. Okay. But for now, guys, you can see that my streamlet file is uh, there, right? Now you might think that I can actually uh, just click on run, right? So now if I click on run, you will see that I actually am not running the web.py file. I'm actually running the main.py file again. The thing is, guys, when you selected a template Python, it actually automatically gave your console certain instructions that whenever you are going to click on the run button, there will be a main.py file that it has to run. So it automatically has a command on the behind of this run button, which is Python main.py. So you can't change that. So thereby, guys, one way to actually run your projects, if you don't want to use this main.py, if you don't want to use the run button, is to just go to the shell and you can find that shell again from the tools. So you can find, go to the tools and you can find the shell here. And you can just write the command right here to actually run your project. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write streamlet run web.py. And when I'm going to run streamlet uh, web.py, it is going to just start running the streamlet package as it would have been doing if I was running this on my local machine. You can see that it starts to render it here. So basically, this is a very important thing that not only Replit allows you to edit and write great backend code, it also helps you in writing frontend code as well because it gives you a web view. So yes, guys, it has a tool called as web view, which renders your entire web page and that too, everything is running on an online machine. So it's not, not your own server. It is everything is running on an online server somewhere. And there you go, guys. You can see that it has the text input. It has a submit button. But now the question arises is that I can't work like that. I can't work like a small screen just like that with a lot of scroll. So what you can actually do is you can click on this maximize button here and it actually maximizes your panel and it allows you to actually, you know, uh, write your code and you know just test it out but there is another way that you can actually test out your code with the help of something called as new tab so if I click on new tab here you can see that it actually opens the entire web view in a new tab okay so now what you can do is you can actually move this new uh, tab or new screen to a different screen, to a different monitor. You can start working on your backend at one place and one monitor and you can start seeing the results on the second monitor. So if you are working with two screens, this thing is very, very handy. And you can even take this link and you can share it with a friend who is sitting somewhere else and they can also actually check this thing out. But remember guys, this is just for local checking. Once you actually stop this application or once you actually close this tab, this link won't work. So this link will stop working. So this link is only for, uh, you know, testing while you are developing the app. But it's pretty cool because now you are able to actually test this application just like as you are, you know, running this uh, application like a local host on your machine or on your own browser. So now if you just press control C guys, you can see that it actually stops running my streamlet application. And as I said to you that 
you know this uh, link is now no longer uh, no longer working apart from that guys you can still see that we have got many other tools that are present here if you want to integrate a database you can do that if you want to enable authentication you can do that if you want to you know just uh, integrate your git with it you can do that it also allows you to actually create a secrets folder so if you don't want to actually mention the secrets in your own application then you can just use the help of this secrets and you can create secret here and use it in your application just like a uh, just to make it more uh, more protective right it also gives you a ssh uh, ssh panel so you can you know connect it to a different machine and you can get the data from there and you know or send the data to there but overall you can see that this is a pretty advanced id to be an online editor right guys because usually you have got all these features in an id which is very heavy you have to install it on your machine all the dependencies that you actually load they come on your machine and it you know its size of it goes on bigger and bigger and bigger and at some point in time you do run out of memory but what if everything actually rest in ripple it uh, what if everything actually rest in ripple and you don't even have to worry about loading all those packages on your machine you can easily work with this at anywhere with any monitor any laptop you don't even have to carry your system everywhere that you go so these are the certain features that i really loved about using this online editor guys and that is why for me this is the best editor for 2024 you will even see that the grok incorporation actually has got many of its projects made with grok uh, ai inference that are all based out of replit and they have given their links in the grok incorporation as well uh so that was my video guys i hope you guys like this video and i hope you learned something from it if you do explore this tool guys then please do not forget to comment down below how was your experience if you have any questions comments suggestions for me please do not uh, forget to write down in the comment section below i would be really happy to address them please 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 do like this video and share this video with your friends if you uh, have not yet subscribed to my channel please do subscribe and hit the bell icon for future notifications of more such programming and coding related videos i'll see you guys in the next video guys until then take care and bye bye